right, real talk, you're actually going to want to keep an eye on these cards. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. I want to start off over here with Heat Wave, and this actually just showed up very, very recently in the OCG, and it, it, it made me go, oh, crap. So Heat Wave, it showed up as a side deck choice for Tenpai Mahjong Dragons, the deck. And you've heard me talk about trying to drag him. This deck's ability to slam 16, 24,000 points of damage on the field. It has a field spell that protects it. But Heat Wave over here, you're like, so at the start of your main phase one, neither player can normal or special some monsters until your next draw phase. You're like, why in the world? Would I ever want to play this card, Robbie? Well, you got two options with Ten Pie Dragons. You're going second deck that needs to put damage on the field. Which means we can we can go first. We can make Crystal Wing to Zolkin, um, and we can add on Necro Valley. Or we can activate Heat Wave and skip our turn, skip our opponent's turn. Our opponent will probably just have to set a monster on the field and you take away every sort of ad possible advancement that your opponent could be attempting to set up and game them. Now, that means you're going to have to hard draw this. Is it very realistic? Yes. Oh, yes it is. Um, I'm actually, I, I love Tenpai Dragons. I love the way that this deck tries to play the game and we, we haven't had a very good going second ignorant deck for a while so the fact that you can have this actually playing and such a fantastic way is great so um we, we've seen how heat wave has gone let me please reprint this card so it's like not a pain in the butt for everybody to try to get next up over here is melodious and i i I don't know if you guys noticed, but I feel like I mention this every video. And your most expensive parts of the deck are literally, like, what? Ostionato, first movement solo? No, nah, it's just usually first movement solo. When you're looking at the things that you want to pick up for the deck. Ever okay, so, like, hear me out here for a second. This stuff, this is from the era of, like, we have Shatter Foils. You know, like, we had the Arc V Star Pack. You know, Konami's way to get players out here engaged with dollar booster packs. And then you had everybody going, don't buy this product. And then, like, three frickin' years later, you're like, I'm gonna go buy this random, st you know, Star Foil card. And you look, you're like, two listings? Why is this garbage $50? That's why. All right. Those cheap garbage boxes that nobody wanted, they're worth something now. And oddly enough, Melodious fits into the category of, huh, maybe, maybe that this is, maybe this is worth picking up. Um, you have a non-targeting bounce that comes out in Legacy, which makes Melodious a very scary rogue deck. And I know, I know. <clears throat> Them melodious cards, nobody's going to play that garbage. Yeah, probably. Maybe, maybe not. Um, rogue is always going to be very rogueful. You know, players will always try out these new ideas and they'll lose to them. And they'll get very upset about it. So, I just want to point out here, we have success. We have the technology. And I do think that it is worth exploring. Honestly, I've watched this deck in three replays so far from the Zodiac Monthly. It's undefeated. And this deck just literally bopped Fire King. Like, it's impressive. Next up is Anti-Spell Fragrance. Wait a minute. So this is, uh, this is basically... We, we did a tech update video literally pff, a couple weeks ago. And a few people were like, Anti-Spell Fragrance is a side deck card right now? Yeah! Yeah, you know what cards are broken? Talents, soul release. You know what both of those cards are? Not chainable quick plays. Which means if you're siding in soul release, you're siding in, you know, these crazy cards, you gotta leave it to the TCG to look at the stupidness of the format and go, wow, we see the, the OCG out here is losing to soul release. Well, that's crazy. TCG players go, no problem, man. 
let's just go play anti-spell fragrance. You know, if, if they board in, all of these crazy board-breaking, annoying little cards, we'll just hit them with the anti-spell, all right? And then it's like, oh, we'll just OTK them on the next turn. They can't play the game if they can't activate spell cards. I understand why people look at anti-spell fragrance and they're like, this card needs to go. Um, I understand that it is a broken floodgate, but it has been a checks and balance through the game, through the years. It just so happens that when you tip the scales a little bit more towards one side of the equation here, that you can run into the issues that we're kind of running into right now with it. You know, in more wide open formats, it doesn't really feel like it's that broken. But when you sit into a format like this one, where you have a clear best deck and you know what you're going to side against and the pre options are predetermined out here, unfortunately, that's where anti-spell comes in and really messes everything up. So, collector's rares, pay attention to those. I can't wait to watch these things continue to go topsy-turvsy for the next eight weeks. Next up is Heavy Storm. Well, you're, you're mentioning a banned card right now. I don't like that. Why are you trying? Because it came unbanned during the last OCG ban list. I don't think a lot of people remember paying attention to this, but Heavy Storm did move to one in the OCG. Does it see a lot of play? Well, yes and no. It's typically Feather Duster and Heavy Storm are like the galactic duo in some list. Some builds just choose not to even play Feather Duster or Heavy Storm. But the thing is, you can also thrust into either option. But having cards to counter back row decks is a good thing. Problem is, is the more that they tend to tip these scales, the more that they invalidate trap cards in the course of the game. And it, they, they walk a very fine line. I mean, at this point in time, if the TCG does get back Heavy Storm, that'll put, what, Double Lightning Storm, um, Feather Duster Raigeki in the mix for multiple back row removal. So... You've got some options going for you here. I, I don't think that that's terrible. Also, I mean, you have so many different flavors of Heavy Storm right now to pick from. I don't particularly see eh, maybe Hobby League, maybe the 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 rarer super rares from the the more niche like retro packs. I, I don't, does it is it Duelist League? It, it had a it had like one or two very niche printings from back in the day that I I can't even remember at this point but point is right now if the tcg is going to follow suit with the the little stupidness out here of the ocg and bring back heavy storm well you're going to want to make sure that you knew months in advance to pick up whatever copy that you wanted we still don't have a mix saber invoker such a weird thing <laughs> that card is like not good like at all and i want to talk about snake eyes you know this isn't a this isn't necessarily a pickup snake eyes and stuff, but this is more or less a, a shout out to the snake eye stuff. You know, the want hits, the, the craziness out here. You've had the chance, if, if you're playing like the tiers, tier crazy one version Maximus gas gas turbo deck, you'll understand what I'm about to say. This engine is insane. Um, it was actually fairly recently we just started seeing the OCG start to get a little bit more bored of the fire side of things. And they're tossing fire in things like tier elements all of a sudden. Or you're, you start tossing this in to more of these, these pile-esque engine decks. And all of a sudden you kind of start to look at the fire package and you're like... You know, if we had more... if Like if we had thunder, maybe like some of these more e explosive decks... I can see a lot more crazy things unfolding on the fire side of things. But I just wanted to give a shout out here and go, hey, you know, if you've picked up fire, which 1% of you probably have, um, you can actually, if you want to just have fun, you can start splashing this in all these other engine decks. And you can have some very, very stupid ideas come to life. Especially the tier fire pile. It's two things I never thought I would see come together, but... Keep an eye on the little the little engines that you can have fun with. I know, fun in the term Yu-Gi-Oh, they don't tend to go together by a lot of people, but I think it's worth mentioning. So, what do you guys think? Please, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back here in day, guys. Peace out. Patrons! Thank you! Ah!
Fall. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.